Uh, yeah, it depends on the immunity we're looking at. Um, first and foremost, I must say I am um, I appreciate the vice president's uh, approach to this issue, most especially these days where some would rather resort to intimidation mm -hmm. using DSS and the police, uh, like we've seen uh, between Agba Jaligo and uh, the crossover state uh, governor and all of that. But the vice president has decided to toe the line of civility and approach court. So if we're looking at um, civil immunity, um, then you can say he, has, he can waive, you know, um, uh, he, he doesn't even need to waive civil immunity. Okay. Because uh, by the uh, Supreme Court authority of uh, Global Excellence and Donald Duke, this is 2007 case, um, he can sue by virtue of Section 308. That does not, uh, Section 308 does not uh, restrain him from, you know, bringing an action to maintain his reputation. Uh, but uh, by the same Supreme Court authority in um, uh, IMB Securities and Tinubu, that one is 2001 authority, um, an action cannot be maintained against him. It's a civil action. Even if the action was, um, you know, brought before he became, um, he assumed that position, mm -hmm. um, that uh, 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 action will be held in abeyance until he leaves office. But for criminal immunity, uh, he can be investigated. Okay. Uh, there is no immunity to investigation, and so he can be investigated but cannot be prosecuted. The essence of investigation, like we've seen EFCC, you know, have done with you know, former governors and even fire shares case really comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And so you can investigate a sitting governor, deputy governor, president or vice president who enjoys immunity, but that, you know, immunity, that investigation stops there. He cannot be prosecuted, okay. you know. So um, I really don't um, see the area that the vice president is waiving immunity for because he doesn't have the power to waive. If in a situation where you sue him, uh, the Supreme Court had said he cannot even waive that immunity to defend that action. Mm -hmm. But the same Supreme Court had said he can sue to maintain his uh, um, reputation and credibility. So are there other legal actions or options rather that are available to him in this case? Yeah, he can decide to, to resign, which is for me far-fetched. Um, he mm -hmm. can decide to say, you know what, mm -hmm. I would, since um, the immunity, you know, there is immunity to, you know, maintain action against me, so I want to step down. But you really don't need to go to that, you, you know, extent because, like I said, if he wants to maintain an action, he can maintain an action whether immunity or no immunity. But it's just that an action cannot be maintained against him, a civil action. And then also, if it's um, for criminal prosecution, he can be investigated. Mm -hmm. It's just that also you can say, if he can say, look, if found culpable, uh, in the course of investigating the matter, he would rather step down and allow the Lord take his course. That's, you know, uh, the best he can do. But mm -hmm. to say he's waving, the Lord does not permit the holder of such office to say he wants to waive, you know, immunity. It's not in his, in his position to say what he wants to do with it. It's a constitutional matter. Okay, so will this experience, so to speak, uh, call, give the way to say, let this immunity clause be scrapped from the Constitution? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit uh, topsy-turvy. Um, yes, to some extent, you say immunity protect, you know, the holders of such office to, you know, allow them work so that they don't consist consistently, you know, look behind their shoulders on who is suing and who is not suing. You know, especially these days that, um, you know, you have, um, it can be frivolous uh, cause actions. Mm -hmm. But in the same vein, the law has, the court has already interpreted the fact that as a holder of such office who enjoys immunity, mm -hmm. and if there is, um, you know, a libellous suit against you, like uh, global excellence and donor do, you have a right to approach the court, you know, for redress in your personal capacity. Okay. And, you know, and so, if you look at the issue of immunity, the area I think we should, you know, whittle down a, a little, uh, really. It's where, you know, investigations are conducted and then, you know, there's, that's the holder of that office is found to be culpable. Then the, such um, agencies can now approach the courts and ask that the courts raise the veil of immunities to enable, you know, them do more. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, talking about corruption also, where, you know, people who are holding that office you know, allegedly use, you know, such office to amass a way for themselves. But mm -hmm. what I think we're doing good so far where, you know, you investigate them, the moment they leave office, then the windmill of justice or the instrumentality of the law will be activated immediately against them. Because complete removal of immunity, mm -hmm. uh, my, my sister, I, I think um, we truly are not 
ready for that because okay. even so, the ones without immunity that we are prosecuting, how well have we done with that? Not to talk of, you mm. know, so a situation where we'll see now where, you know, certain persons, um, depending on the political platform or party that you belong to, you know, you are seen culpable and then those are who belong to a certain political party are seen as the clean ones. And that also might open a floodgate, an opportunity for you know, any government in power to hound, you know, the governors of the opposition if, um, you know, there is any um, strain in their uh -huh. relationship and so and that's why we also need to be very careful okay so the implication of removing it entirely is quite huge yes very very huge very so huge. having said that so what what's the merits and the merits actually of the immunity clause yeah um, we've seen the, the merits like we're seeing is the uh -huh. fact that yes it allows the holder of such office um, to you know work without really looking at their shoulders on who is coming after them. Mm -hmm. And then also, some of those merits are the fact that now the courts, like we say in law, the law is what the court says it is. Mm -hmm. And so the court has opened a window of opportunity that, yes, you cannot be prosecuted, but you can right. be investigated. And, and so that doesn't preclude you know, security agencies from investigating the such holders of such offices. And so in the case of the former vice president, uh, but I think that um, if um, the allegations have been made and he's, he has said you know, he's ready to waive immunity and um, he's ready to w go to court to defend his, um, his reputation. Mm -hmm. And then um, also the man who is alleging, he's yeah. insisting he found, yeah. that uh, he has uh, facts to back up you know, his allegation. I think at this stage there should be an unbiased investigating team if truly we want to be taken seriously as a, you know, a country that is uh, fighting corruption, that's uh, an unbiased thing, should be raised up to actually investigate uh, you know, such, such allegations and claims. Mm. And then if um, there are you know, myths in uh, the allegations, then the necessary steps can be taken to either impeach or you know, um, ask the pre vice president to resign. But if there is no, you know, the allegations are all substantiated, mm. and then also, the, um, the carrier of such allegations also, the appropriate damages and sanctions should be meted out to them to deter, you know, others who just sit down in the comfort of their room using social media, mm -hmm. you know, to, to pedal half truth. And, but the danger in all of this is the fact that uh, when they, like we say in local parlance, when you see a madman dancing by the roadside, you know that the drama is not far from him. Mm -hmm. and, and so in this era of you know, allegations, counter allegations against the office of the vice president and the person of the vice president. Mm -hmm. There have been so many in the news. And so Lately. I don't think this would be an opportunity, a good time, you know, for them to, you know, allow, allow a free for all, mm -hmm. you know, fight on issues like this. And because, except, he, we might just be right, there is no, you know, skeleton out of any skeleton in the cupboard. Mm -hmm. Because if there is, they might, if you, the matter might get to court and, you know, they would uh, completely abandon the issue in court and then raise, you know, other raise other matters and make it a rough or rougher fight. Mm -hmm. And like we say, rough or rougher fight here, it's like um, uh, an unruly horse. And once you get astride it, you wouldn't really know where it will take you to. All right, you've actually uh, answered the other two questions. But lastly, the Vanguard newspaper has also retracted the story and apologized. What do you think are the inherent lessons from this? I mean, we are also uh, uh, media practitioners. What are the lessons? I, I think it was the best thing to do, um, whether the story is true or not. Mm -hmm. It was the best thing to, for Vanguard to have you know, done because they are not the maker of the stories. Um, they, are, they were just a conveyor you know, a conveyor belt, a carrier, and, and so why would you want to put your head, you know, on the grind for a story that you, you have not properly investigated mm -hmm. or that did not emanate from your newsroom? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so to that, the best thing to do is, you know, tender an apology and then also maybe because of relationship, the relationship, keep the relationship that they have with that office also. And then allow the maker of, you know, story to swim and sink with it because if you insist except it's a story that originally was done by vanguard mm -hmm. if it was originally done by vanguard and then they say okay oh we apologize or we 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 do not want to apologize a different case but here they were just a conveyor bed and in most cases also if it was an avactoria they probably would have extracted an indemnity from you know the the, the maker and, and and so here they really would not want to bother themselves with you know, how true or untrue the story is. And so, but especially 
since the maker is alive and is insisting that he would prove, you know, would have his, his days in, in court. So why would Vanguard not apologize or why would they want to, you know, uh, carry on a, a fight that is truly not theirs? That's the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Leporos Oshama, for sharing your thoughts there. My pleasure.